Hello and welcome to another episode of Arm Review. I'm Ominous and today we will review the third studio album by Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin 3. Getting real original with the start was Led Zeppelin. Fucking hell. Third one in a row and they're not squaring there. Although the fourth one wasn't officially titled but you know people tend to call it the fourth one. Untitled I suppose. Uh, so there we go. Yeah the third one uh, of Honestly, you know, out of all the um, self-titled Zeppelin albums, I think this one is the least memorable in my opinion. I, st I still like it, I still really love this album, but you know, people tend to call this one the underrated, the hidden gem of the Zeppelin records, although I just think it's the weakest, honestly. It's still a great album, don't get me wrong, but it's just that this album was, you know, the least heavy, not that that is a problem, but it's just the least, you know, meh, that's just how I feel about it, honestly. So, well, I still love the record, but it's just out of the four, out of the first, you know, the first three albums, it's just the weakest, I think. Still a great record, but, you know, first two were better, I think. But uh, this is still a very consistent album, it's 42 minutes long I think, 43 minutes and 4 seconds, so almost right. 10 songs on here, uh, track listing is here. Yeah, let's just get into the first one, Immigrant Song, this is a very classic song, you know, you have of course that riff. And of course the screams by uh, Robert Plant, I'm not going to imitate them because it's cringy as fuck. Uh, this is just a two and a half minutes classic rock song. If I did wish something about this song, I did wish that it was a bit longer because that riff is just infectious as hell. So this is a very perfect opening song, one of the best opening songs of Led Zeppelin, honestly. Up there with Black Dog, you know, you're not gonna beat a whole lot of love in my opinion, but it's up there for sure. Then we have Francis, it's kind of like a, um, a song that is kind of trying to recapture the lining in a bottle effect of thank you which is a very it's it's very it comes very close though i think that um it comes very close to doing that it's a very um emotional song very very uh just yeah that worth basically very mellow very just emotional emotional once again it's just a perfect word for the song it's a very great track, track to check it out, definitely if you have friends, so I can't really relate with the song, but it's still a great song nonetheless, and I can see why, you know, friends would play this with each other, because it just sounds like one. <sighs> Fuck no. Uh, then we get Celebration Day, this is a great song. Basically, the, the side one is great, I think. Side one in its entirety is just amazing in its own. Celebration Day, they just kind of implement the riffs of immigrant song and kind of you know takes something from the next song which is the most acclaimed song of the album i think uh this is just an overall very stellar track it's basically like an an kind of improved immigrant song although i do prefer Im immigrant immigrant song in my opinion uh it, it is just a very like great song it's just kind of you know it's kind of like if immigrants, immigrants, if I can say the fucking word, immigrant song and friends made a baby, they would make Celebration Day. Uh, just an overall fantastic track, three and a half minutes long, it's rock and roll, it's, you know, classic, it's just a, it's pretty much like an instant classic, so just listen. You know, it's one of the tracks that you just have to listen to for yourself to kind of decide it, you know, it's one of those tracks. And then we got Since I've Been Loving You, a uh, very bluesy track, it's seven and, a half, seven and a half minutes long. I believe, yeah, this is easily the longest Zeppelin track so far. I love the length, I love the, the riffs on there, the, the bluesy kind of like, uh, almost kind of jazz kind of sound of, the, of this track. You know, I really love it. I, I think that Led Zeppelin did a great job of doing those things, of, um, of covering those genres. And this is also great because uh, actually Celebration Day and this one are written by Jones, uh, John Paul Jones, uh, Jimmy Page and Robert Plant. So arguably the, you know, the triple threat of Zeppelin. 
I know John Bonham is a great drummer, he's not really like a songwriter per se, you know, he is the Ringo of the band, obviously because he's the drummer, but you know, also the weakest songwriter. Still writes some great songs, but um, you know, there you go. And I'm reading some, something really weird here, which I will get into a bit. What the fuck? Um, yeah, great song. Yeah, this is pretty much my favorite Zeppelin song right there, uh, with Immigrant Song and Celebration Day, so just a classic song in general. Now we get out on the tiles, and although I do still really love the song, it is like, it was the John Bonham track still partially co-written with Jimmy Page and Robert Plant, but this track was mostly written by John Bonham, I believe, and you can definitely hear that on the quality. Still a great track, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely the weakest track of, of uh, the first side, which was pretty much flawless, as I said. And there's still a great song, don't get me wrong, it's still like an, it's still an A song, you know, it's still a uh, great A. But I do think that this is the weakest A out of all the A's, if you know what I mean, but still great. And then we get Gallows Paul, and this is um, this is really weird. I don't know who traditional A R R is. That's I don't know who that is, but yeah, he wrote this with Page and Plan. So I don't know who this is, but this is definitely like a weird, weird songwriter. Uh, I do really like this track because it's kind of like avant-garde in a way. It's kind of like bluesy and kind of weird. And that's probably why people love this album so much because this. Side two of this album is really weird. I still, uh, you know, I still love this side for the mo for the most part, but I do think that um, this is a very weird and disjointed track of the album. It doesn't really flow with the rest of the songs, honestly. But it still sounds like a Zeppelin tune, but it's really fucking weird. So if you're into that kind of stuff, then this is definitely for you. But I was not expecting this, but I gladly take it. It's you know. And that's kind of how it is. Um, can I compare it with something, you know, uh, whenever you get to a party or something and you're asking for a coke or something, but you, you, you know, you get a Sprite instead, I'll take it, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> it's, it's one of those kind of occasions, I, I, I guess. Um, then we get Tangerine, which is um, solely written by Paige, and I believe this is the only track solely written by Paige. I really love the acoustic guitar on this track. It's only three minutes long, so it's it's a very like uh, it's kind of like ramble on um, how's it going to California kind kind of song, you know? It is just kind of like a mellow kind of nice song to listen to. Very great. It kind of speaks for itself, honestly. It's just like a very chill mellow song to listen to. It's not exactly going to California, but it's still like a great song to mellow out to, I suppose. Um, I would say that the first seven songs of these of this album so far is, are very great but I think that these last three songs they're not terrible they're you know they're not even uh, bad or something they're you know they're not even good they're they're still well I would say they're very good though they're, they're very good tracks and I think that uh, the latter is mediocre I, I don't know what I think of this track honestly but uh, that's the way it's still a very like kind of funny song I think, you know Zeppelin is kind of like having some fun here, five and a half minutes long so I do think that the track is a little bit too long for what they're going for honestly, but I still like it. Um, and this track is just very interesting, you know you can definitely hear the influences of Untitled on, this, on the second side because it's just very different, kind of, yeah it's folky blues rock. So that's probably why, you know, Zeppelin 3 never really caught my ear. It's, it's, you know, I still love it, don't get me wrong, but it's, whenever I listen to Led Zeppelin, I never think, yes, I have to listen to Led Zeppelin 3 now. I never think that, because this record is folk rock and blues rock. And although I do like those genres, I never love them. And that's, you know, it's still Zeppelin now, but it never really caught my ear, in my opinion, but, you know, whatever. Uh, and that's kind of like how that's the way it is. It's still a, a great song. It's, I still respect it for how it is, but it's definitely just kind of, you know, it doesn't really sound like a Zeppelin tune in my opinion, but that's of course debatable. Uh, yeah, and then we get into the last two songs, which are basically the only two flaws of the record, you know. 
Although I do really love pretty much side one, side one is perfect, I think, and I think that Gallows Ball is unique, it's original. I think that Tangerine is a great metal track. I, th I even think that uh, that's the way, is kind of like Gallows Ball, it's original, you know. It's not something I've heard from the band so far, but I think these last two tracks are, they kind of tend to kind of suck, honestly. They're kind of You Shoot Me part two and three. You know, Bron, how do you even say this? Bron, I, our stomp. Bron, why, our stomp. Like that title is retarded. That's pretty much like the most retarded title yet. And this last title might take it even more, but I don't know. It might take the cake. Uh, but this track overall, it's just borderlines into full blown. Uh, mediocrity honestly this track is just it's a throwaway track honestly it just sounds like filler it just doesn't really encapsulate it doesn't really uh, connect with me honestly it just sounds like you know it's weird because Jones John Paul Jones Jimmy Page and Robert Plant worked on this track so you think it's one of the greats but not in my opinion it just sounds like I don't know, it just sounds like something they wrote it together, but they should have left it on the cutting board floor, but they didn't do that. It's not bad, you know, it's not like it's not the final track, but uh, it's just like, what, why, you know, why does this exist? And then we get heads off to Roy Harper, which is just, what the fuck was Led Zeppelin thinking? Um, and I believe my colleague put this song at like the number one war song of Led Zeppelin. I think this was number one and I can definitely agree with that because this song is ass. This song is ass. I mean, it's disjointed as hell. Robert Plant sings terrible on this track. Um, fucking, you know, the the chords, the just everything about this track is just so disjointed. It just, just doesn't sound proper. It sounds like Zeppelin was out of their fucking asses recording this shit. And it's actually the only unclickable song outside of Out on the Tiles, which are both the clothing songs of their respective sides, side one and side two, which probably should speak uh, you know, it's it speaks for itself, honestly. It's, it probably says it all. I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but it's it's kind of says it kind of says it all, honestly. So overall, um, although Heads of the Roy Har Harper doesn't ruin the album for me, and probably why this song is so out of place on the record is probably because. This is the only song not written by the band, so this was kind of like a, a single kind of written song, but it's miserably filled. This was written by traditional ARR again, and Charles Obscure. Who the fuck are those people? I don't know who those people are, so... This is such a weird song. It's not weird in a good way, it's just kind of weird bad, it's just kind of like weird bad out of place, you know. It's, it's kind of like when you're, having a f when you're having fun with all your friends, uh, you know, with all your best friends on, uh, on a party or something at your house. And that one weird fucking kid shows up and he's like, you know, that just weird nerd that nobody invited and he wanted to show up anyway because he thought, hey, I'm part of the class or the, the party. It's kind of, it's, this song is kind of like that, honestly. It's just kind of like that weirdo. But you know, still on there, still appreciate it, so. Although, you know, on parties you have the option to kick him out because he was not invited. That's not really optional on this album, but I'll take it, I'll take it. So, although it is pretty much the worst Led Zeppelin song ever, arguably. Yeah, I won't say, I still like it, but Mm, not really. So overall, I think that the first eight songs of this album um, is amazing, and I think that the ninth one is iffy. It's mixed for me, and I think that the tenth track is just bad. It's a bad. It's not awful, but it's such a fucking clusterfuck of a song. Like just listen to it for yourself. 
Traditional ARR and Charles Obscure, Obscure cannot write a fucking song for Led Zeppelin. I don't know why, why they did this anyway, you know, just drop hats off to Roy Harper and you still would have had a 9 track, you know, 40 minutes classic album. Which the previous album albums were also 40 minutes long and 9 tracks long. So it would have made perfect sense for you to just take off hats off. It probably was just kind of like a last minute throw on because they thought, hey, we want 10 tracks instead of 9 for some reason. So I think that Hassel is just a big mistake, but you know, our sound of that album is pretty much classic. So I'm gonna give this album a 9.6. It's near flawless, I just think that the last two tracks, they didn't really do it for me. But I do think that the first eight tracks are fantastic, so definitely check out this album. It's uh, for the most part very, very good, I just think that the ending of this album is just, nah, you know, it's not for me. But uh, let me know what you think about Led Zeppelin 3 in the comments down below. I still think it's a very great album outside of, you know, the last couple of ones. So let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. I've been on and I will see you guys in the next video. Of course, like and subscribe to the channel. Onus for more videos like the one if you didn't say it already. And I will see you in the next video. Peace. And of course, let me know what is your favorite Led Zeppelin album, favorite song. Do you actually like Heads of the Roy Harper? Let me know in the comments down below. And I will see you in the next video. For the third fucking time. It is appropriate though. It's Led Zeppelin T. T. Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin 3. I can't speak anymore. Led Zeppelin 3. Third studio album. It is appropriate. So there we go. I, didn't, I don't even know why again. But whatever. Fucking. Hetzel fucks me up. Literally. Fucking up.